Darren Jernis. I drive the 73 Rocket Camaro uh, for Rocket Racing Wheels, and I'm the sales manager for Rocket Racing Wheels. So basically, the way I got to drive this car is I worked for David at Rocket Racing Wheels, and he knew I liked race cars and stuff, and I had a, uh, a BMW race car, and then uh, we went to Nashville Super Speedway for a track day, and I invited him to come out there and race with us, so he ran it and had a blast and loved it. And then we released the Pro Touring Wheels, the Attack, and with the Attack wheel, he wanted to build a platform that would showcase the wheels and what we could do with them. And so he commissioned Big Oak Garage to build the car. But before he did that, he said, hey, you want to drive this car? I said, absolutely. So David Coker bought this car in the spring of 2018 with the intention of building an autocross car. Um, when he got it, it was a street car that had a big block and automatic transmission and some stuff from Detroit Speed, like the upper control arms, lower control arms from the front, and then it had a quadra link in the back. And it wasn't really set up for what we wanted to do, so we just started buying parts. So with Autocross, the big block is not an ideal platform for this car. Um, so we did some research and decided we want to go with an LS3 from Blueprint Engines. Uh, we got the 427 version of their LS3. Uh, it's like they rated it at 565 horsepower and 525 foot-pounds of torque or so. And that was going to be good for our application. Um, the first year we ran it, it was uh, on a stock computer. And then we switched to the Holly Dominator computer the second year so we could have some more inputs and outputs. So once we tuned the car, we tuned it on race gas for the first year. And we made 550 horsepower at the rear tires roughly and about 500 foot-pounds of torque from 2000 to Redline, which is a pretty impressive torque number for you know that car. Um, you know it does present some traction problems having that much torque throughout the range, but you know with the tires on it, we can kind of manage it a little bit in the right foot. So the first year, um, you know when David first bought the car, it had an automatic transmission in it, and so when Big Oak built it for us, we switched it over to a T56 Super Magnum. Um, and then we paired the rear end gear to a 342 so that way first gear the car tops out at about 60 miles an hour so you don't have to shift very often during autocross unless it's a really big course. So the rear end of the car when we bought it already had a Detroit Speed Quadra link in the back which worked great for the first year. Uh, we ran that all year and never had any issues out of it. The only option to go better than a solid axle would be independent rear suspension so for the second year we got Art Morrison independent rear suspension and put in that so it's a Dana 60 housing I believe and it's rated at 1600 horsepower and then with the Art Morrison rear end we had to go with a little bit uh, shorter gear in it so it's a 352 rear end now. When we bought the car, the Detroit Speed suspension that was on the front of the car didn't have the updated rack and pinion steering, was still a box on it, so we wanted to upgrade that. So uh, we purchased their Hydroform subframe and then got their LS cross member with all that stuff and has GRI coilovers in the front. And that setup worked phenomenal. Um, then we went at the rear end on the first year after the uh, the solid axle, we went to the IRS from Art Morrison, and then we had to match the coilovers to be consistent across the car. And so um, we run JRI front and rear on this car, they're double adjustables. Uh, the first year out, the spring rates were really soft. We were running about 650 in the front and I think 500 in the rear. And it just the car squat and rolled like crazy. So the second year out with it, we had 1,100 pound springs in the front and 800 pound springs in the rear. So with the new suspension front and back, most people think that running 1,100 pound springs in the front and 800 pound springs in the rear is just gonna jar your teeth out, but we drive this car on the street all the time and it's perfectly fine for a daily driver if you want to, it just doesn't have air conditioning. Um, the car on the track handles phenomenally. We just have to make some minor tweaks and adjustments to the, the dampening and rebound settings. And other than that, I mean, I can't complain. It, it's, a, it's beyond what I can drive. The car originally had four piston Willwood like super lights on the front and it had the two piston Willwoods in the rear. Um, and for autocross, that's just not going to cut it. So we bought the biggest brake kit that we could fit on the car, which is the six piston front, and then uh, put those on the car. 
and then the following year we added the rears because uh, the the two pistons just weren't biting the back hard enough so we got with our morris and they they sent their big brake kit for the rear from willwood as well and uh with for pedals we have willwood pedals with uh, tilton cylinders in it and it's a manual brake setup so that we have better pedal feel and then the bias valve um, is built into the pedal box as well so the wide body on this car is a one-off from Big Oak Garage. Um, it's a all, all the body panels are, are metal. The hood and the nose cone are fiberglass, um, but they pie cut the entire fenders and rear quarter panels and widened it and did their own taste of a wide body so it doesn't have the bubble flares. It's just a clean, cleaner look. Um, I mean, it's, when they had the car torn apart, you could not tell that it was a Camaro. There was nothing there but a roll cage and the floor pans, essentially. Uh, but they replaced all that as well. I mean, it's, there's not much metal on this car that hasn't been replaced except for the inner structures. They had it cut to where it was a 10, 10 cam of bullet holes cut through it. The car weighs about 3,300 pounds. Um, we added a lot of safety components to it in the cage and kind of overbuilt the cage for the purposes of autocross but one day we'll probably start doing track days and you know race track events with it um, so we wanted it to be able to kind of do all of the above and by doing that you know adding all the roll, roll cage tubing just adds weight to it and so we added a bunch of weight with that and then also with the chassis stiffening big oak tied in the detroit speed front subframe to the art morrison clip that we put in the back with two by three steel tubing and then all the floors underneath the seats have quarter inch plate so that way nothing can come up underneath the car and bust through the floor pan and kill you. So when we bought the car it was a full interior car um, but for race car purposes you don't need all that carpet and everything else so right now it's all bare metal on the interior. We changed the old Corbo seats out that didn't hold you very well for some uh, OMP HDRZ 400 seats that have the halos and uh, they go took them to their upholstery shop and had them rewrapped with the uh, Mercedes Cool Touch leather and put our emblems on it. And then the uh, harnesses are Straw Profi 6s. Uh, they're a six point harness that are made for Hans device. So when we do, you know, track days or whatnot, you know, you wear Hans, they're compatible with that. They sheet metal the entire inside, the trunk and then firewalled everything off. So it's completely sealed from the fuel cell in the back. The gauges that we run are the Dakota Digital HDX series and also run a Holly uh, touchscreen for the Holly Dominator. So to feed the Thirsty motor, um, we went with a new fuel system. Um, it is a fuel safe cell with a Radium FCST, which is their fuel cell surge tank. So it's got three high pressure pumps and one lift pump so you don't starve the car going around corners. And then a um, couple other things we did were add bigger injectors, bigger fuel rails, and also added the uh, Fast 102 intake manifold for it. So the exhaust on the car has, uh, I believe it's hooker headers, and then um, Borla hooked us up with their race exhaust, which is a uh, full mandrel bent stainless steel with race mufflers. And then it's a builder's kit, so Big Oak had to, you know, pie cut it, weld it where they wanted it. And then also Big Oak did a, uh, the boat scuffers at the back of the uh, tail pan instead of having traditional exhaust that dump out the axles it comes out the back of the car now. So another thing we did to try to take some weight out of the car when we put on the scales was uh, we put acrylic glass in it from AM Hot Rod Glass. So the front windshield and rear window are all AM Hot Rod Glass acrylic and the side windows are still glass. So when we first got the car and took it to Big Oak, our goal was to be at the Des Moines Good Guys show in 2018 and we dropped the car off four and a half weeks before that show and Big Oak Garage absolutely knocked out of the park and brought us a competitive car to start with. Um, four and a half weeks they built this thing from the ground up pretty much and then the second year into it we decided we wanted to go bigger so we would did the 335s the wide body so they had the car, car torn down for you know quite a while but um, the quality of the work they do is just impeccable. Um, can't complain with anything. They're great guys to work with. And Will Posey that runs the shop, he's, he's the man. So the purpose of this car was, like I said, to showcase the wheels and you know what they're capable of and people don't have to spend so, many, so much money on an expensive set of wheels when you know, we offer something that comes in 
a ton of different sizes and back spaces and they're all on the shelf. Um, you know, doing this project has kind of made us have a bigger appearance in the pro touring world because we never had a pro touring wheel before. Everything was hot rod and classic wheel oriented. Um, you know, so this is just a good showcase for us to, to showcase the wheels and the cars and come out and have fun. I mean, everyone loves to have fun and driving a car is a blast.